students today we discuss phylum annelida the best example is earthworm the common name is earthworm in the phylum annelida the taxonomic position of annelida is phylum in the annelida we have to discuss three classes mainly one we call it as polyketa second one is oligoketa third one is irudinia and the fourth one is archi annelida but generally we should not discuss the fourth class archi annelida in the archi annelida the earthworms or annelids are very very primitive the fourth class archi annelida in the class archi annelida the annelids are very very primitive the first class is polyketa <coughs> the common name is brigil worms the third class irudinia the common name is leeches the second class we call it as oligoketa what is the common name of oligoketa earthworms as we observe the earthworms the earthworms live in the burrows so these are called fossorial as we observe the earthworms while we are discussing the questions for each and every question we have to discuss some related information now we have to discuss one by one now what is the first question regarding the introduction of earthworm now you have to observe the first question the body of ferritima is well suited for as we observe the ferritima the common name is earthworm the body is elongated anterior end is slightly narrow posterior end is broad as we observe the body of earthworm it is well suited for now what are the options one is fossorial life second one arboreal third one aquatic fourth one cursorial what is meant by cursorial run very fast what is meant by aquatic they live in water what is the arboreal they live on the branches of the tree but here what is the question body of ferritima is well suited for the body of ferritima is suited to live in the burrows if the animals live in burrows that is technically called fossorial so here what is the answer for this question is the first option fossorial now we move for the second question the porphyrin protect the earthworm from the now as we observe the body of earthworm this is the body of earthworm this is the dorsal side and this is the ventral side as we observe the dorsal side of earthworm body it is dark brown whereas the ventral side is light brown what is the responsible for the brown coloration that is porphyrin now here what is the question what is the function of porphyrin the dorsal side exposed to the sunlight from the strong intensity of light the dorsal side or the body of earthworm is being protected with the help of porphyrin pigment now again we observe the question the porphyrin protect the earthworm from the one we call it as chemicals second one ir infrared rays third one uv radiation and the fourth one cosmic rays as we observe the radiant energy in the radiant energy one type of radiant energy is uv rays against uv rays the body of earthworm is being protected by due to the presence of what type of pigment that we call it as porphyrin now what is the answer that is the second the third answer uv radiation now move for the next question pseudo segment in ferritima 
as we observe the body of erythema this is the first segment the first segment is called peristomium attached to peristomium a fold like structure is hanging that we call it as prostomium this we call it as prostomium what is meant by prostomium it is a skin fold hanging anterior to the first segment now here what is the question pseudo segment in ferritima first one peristomium that is the first segment second one pygidium what is meant by pygidium the last segment called anal segment what about the third segment the segment with male genital pores in which segment we have to identify the male genital pores 18th but here the question is what is the pseudo segment that is the prostomium why it is called pseudo segment in this segment the coelom absent the visceral organs absent it appears to be segment but in reality it is not a segment because in this segment the coelom and visceral organs absent so the prostomium is called the pseudo segment so what is the answer the fourth option now move for the next question the cetal sac is formed by invagination of this part of body wall now observe the options cuticle dermis outer coelomic epithelium and epidermis again what is the cetal sac now as we observe this one we call it as the cetal sac in the cetal sac what is present the cetum now this is the cetal sac here the question is the cetal sac is formed by invagination what is the meaning of invagination the folding of this part of the body wall one option cuticle second option dermis third one outer coelomic epithelium the fourth one is epidermis now the answer is epidermis because of the invagination of epidermis we are getting cetal sac suppose in the options if epidermis is absent we go for the invagination of body wall if body wall absent we go for ectoderm it means the ct and cetal sacs these are derived from which germ layer the ectoderm so here what is the correct answer the epidermis again repeated cetal sac formed by invagination of epidermis or invagination of body wall or invagination of cuticle all these options are correct now move for the next question <coughs> majils which move the ct now as we observe the cetum now this one we call it as the cetum this one we call it as the cetum this part we call it as exposed part this part we call it as the swollen part nodules this part we call it as the base in each segment the movement of cetum is under the control of one pair of protractor one pair of protractor muscles and one retractor muscles and one retractor muscles how many muscles responsible for the movement of cetum three muscles in these three muscles how many are paired the protractor muscles are two in number whereas the retractor muscle is one in number how many muscles are required for the movement of cetum three muscles now muscles which move the ct adductor abductor they are associated with mandibles of cockroach 
second one tergosternal muscles associated with the insects third one protractor and retractor how many protractor muscles two how many retractor muscles one now here the answer is the third option now we move for the next question now match the following first one regarding the list one ph of silomic fluid second one smallest earthworm third one european earthworm fourth one longest south indian earthworm now go for the list two one is acidic second one lumbricus third one alkaline next one ketogaster next one dravida now we have to match the two list one we call it as ph of silomic fluid as we observe the ph of silomic fluid it is alkaline in nature the ph is above 7 so the ph of silomic fluid is alkaline what is the second one smallest earthworm now as we observe the smallest earthworm what is the genus name of smallest earthworm the ketogaster that is the smallest earthworm now what is the european earthworm the european earthworm is the lumbricus now what is the fourth one the longest south indian earthworm now you have to listen one word in the world what is the longest earthworm megascolides but here what is the asking what is the longest south indian earthworm for example what are the places come under the south india one example is ap one example is tamil nadu one example is kerala like that these are the places come under the south india what is the longest south indian earthworm that is dravida grandis what is its length 1 meter now what is the correct answer for this question the second one now we move for the next question A wrong combination megascolex pericatin utfs octocatin feritima lumbricin lumbricus octocatin now as we observe the arrangement of ct the arrangement of ct is of two types now this one we call it as the segment this is dorsal side ventral side and lateral sides now in the pericatin arrangement on all sides what are present the ct are present on dorsal ventral and on lateral sides on all sides what are present ct such type of arrangement pericatin what is the second one that two one we call it as lumbricin the lumbricin is also called octocatin arrangement now in this arrangement this is one segment this is dorsal side ventral side lateral side on the lateral sides two pairs of ct on the ventral side two pairs of ct totally how many ct eight ct so it is called octocatin it is present in octocatus and lumbricus only in remaining all earthworms what type of setal arrangement pericatin only in lumbricus and octocatus this type of setal arrangement present now here what is the wrong combination megascolex in the body of megascolex pericatin arrangement utfs in the utfs octocatin arrangement present now in the third one feritima in the feritima what type of setal arrangement the pericatin but here lumbricin arrangement that is the wrong what about the lumbricus in the lumbricus what type of arrangement is present the octocatin now here what is the wrong combination that is the third option feritima in the feritima no lumbricin pericatin arrangement present now move for the next question 
the buccal segment of earthworm. Now, as we observe the body of earthworm, this is the first segment. On the ventral side of first segment, what is present? The mouth is present. The first segment present around the mouth. Hence, it is called <coughs> peristomium. Why the first segment is called peristomium? Because on the ventral side of first segment, the mouth is present. In the first segment, some part of buccal cavity present. So, the first segment is also called the buccal segment. Now, as we observe the question, what is the buccal segment of earthworm? First one, prostomium. We know very well that is pseudo segment, no coelom and viscera. The second one we call it as peristomium. What is the other name of peristomium? First segment. In the peristomium, not only mouth, but also some part of buccal cavity present. So, the peristomium or first segment is also called the buccal segment. What about the third one? Caudal segment that is concerned with reference to the posterior end. Pseudo segment that is called prostomium. Now, what is the correct answer for this question? The second option, peristomium. Now, move for the next question. Segment of ferritima without any type of external apertures. What is the meaning of external aperture? That is external pore. Here, what they are asking? Segment of ferritima without any type of external aperture. Now, this is the first segment. On the ventral side of first segment, what is present? The mouth is present. Now, this is second segment and this is third segment. From third segment to last segment, what are present? The nephridiopores are present. And from third segment to last segment, we have to observe other external pores. But here in the second segment, no external pore. As we observe the first segment, in front of the first segment, what is present? A pseudo segment. But it is not a true segment. It is not considered as a true segment. Because in this segment, coelom and viscera are absent. So, how many are true segments in the body of ferritima? 120 segments. What are the true segments? In each segment, the part of coelom, the part of viscera present. Now here, what is the question? In the body of ferritima, name the segment without any pore. That is the second segment. Now, what is the correct answer for this question? That is second segment. That is the first option is the correct answer. Now, move for the next question. The dorsal side of skin of ferritima is dark brown due to. Now, as we observe the body of earthworm, this is the dorsal side and this is ventral side. How we can identify the dorsal side? The dorsal side is dark brown in color. What is the another identification? Now, as we observe the dorsal side of the body, on the dorsal side of the body, a black colored long stripe is present. Once again repeated, on the dorsal side, a longitudinal black colored stripe is present. That we call it as the dorsal blood vessel. Because of the presence of dorsal blood vessel, we can identify the dorsal side of earthworm. What is the second identification? The dorsal side is dark brown in color. On the ventral side, light brown in color. What is the reason for the dark brown color on the dorsal side due to the presence of porphyrin pigment? Already we learned the porphyrin pigment protect the skin from the strong intensity of UV radiation. 
now what is the answer for this question that is the first option we call it as porphyrin now go for the next question in ferritima nephridiopores are the openings of again repeating in ferritima nephridiopores are the openings of one is typical nephridia second one pharyngeal nephridia third one micro nephridia and the fourth one septal nephridia now here the question is in the body of ferritima in the body of ferritima what type of nephridia absent the typical nephridia absent now what type of nephridia present the septal nephridia the septal nephridia is open why it is called open the nephrostom present the septal nephridia opens into elementary canal entero now the second type of nephridia we call it as pharyngeal nephridia in the pharyngeal nephridia nephrostom is absent close the pharyngeal nephridia open into elementary canal entero what is the last nephridia that we call it as micro nephridia as we observe the micro nephridia in the micro nephridia the nephrostom is absent called the closed the micro nephridia open on the body surface with the help of the nephridiopores now you have to observe the question in ferritima nephridiopores are the openings of one we call it as the typical nephridia they are absent in the body of ferritima <coughs> second one pharyngeal nephridia pharyngeal nephridia open into elementary canal third option micro nephridia in the micro nephridia the nephridiopores open on the body surface now what is the correct answer for this question the third answer what about the fourth option septal nephridia septal nephridia also open into elementary canal so the correct answer is the micro nephridia or integumentary nephridia now go for the next question earthworm with two pairs of setae ventrally and two pairs of setae venterolaterally in each segment now as we observe the arrangement of setae one type of arrangement we call it as octocatine or lumbricine arrangement this is one segment now this is dorsal side ventral side lateral side now in the lumbricine or octocatine arrangement on the ventral side two pairs of setae present on the lateral side two pairs of setae are present first pair second pair third pair and fourth pair how many setae in each segment eight in this arrangement on the dorsal side what are you absent setae absent now regarding this question earthworm with two pairs of setae ventrally and two pairs of setae venterolaterally in each segment is now for the octocatine arrangement what are the best examples one is lumbricus and the second one we call it as octocatus now first option ferritima in the ferritima in each segment on all sides ct present so the first one is eliminated second octocatus third lumbricus and the fourth one is octocatus and lumbricus in octocatus and lumbricus in each segment on the ventral side two pairs on the lateral side so two pairs in each segment eight setae where setae absent on the dorsal side now the correct answer is the fourth option is correct now move for the next question setal sac is formed by now as we observe the body wall of earthworm now this is called in the body wall the first part we call it as cuticle and the second one we call it as epidermis and the third one we call it as the dermis attached to the dermis what are present the circular muscles now attached to circular muscles 
what are present the longitudinal muscles below longitudinal muscles again what are present the circular muscles below circular muscles what is present outer coelomic epithelium now here the question is the setal sac is formed by now as we observe the body wall now the body wall undergoes invagination now the body wall undergoes invagination because of the invagination of body wall we are getting the setal sac in the setal sac what is present the setum is present now the setal sac is formed by invagination of epidermis that is also correct invagination of body wall that also correct invagination of ectoderm that is also correct because the body wall and epidermis are derived from which germ layer ectoderm now we observe the options evagination that means come out evagination of epidermis of body wall that is wrong second one invagination of epidermis of body wall here the setal sac is formed by invagination invagination means folding invagination of body wall goes to producing the setal sac in the setal sac what is present the setum is present now what is the correct answer for this question the second option now move for the next question the toti potent cells of earthworm now as we observe the epidermis in the epidermis what type of cells are present one type of cells we call it as the gland cells the second type of cells we call it as the supporting cells and the third type of cells we call it as the mucus cells and the next type of cells we call it as basal cells and the next type of cells we call it as sensory cells now here what is the question what are the toti potent cells of earthworm now as we observe the body wall in the body wall one layer we call it as epidermis in the epidermis what are present gland cells what are the gland cells one type of gland cells are called mucus cells one type of gland cells are called albumin cells the second type of cells are supporting cells the third type of cells are called sensory cells what about the fourth type of cells toti potent cells now what are the toti potent cells they produce all kinds of cells for example in one experiment in the epidermis the gland cells are removed the sensory cells are removed the supporting cells are removed name the cells are not removed only toti potent cells here what are the toti potent cells the basal cells in the epidermis if all cells are removed except basal cells the basal cells produce all cells hence the basal cells are called toti potent cells or the formative cells what is the other name of basal cells formative cells they are also called toti potent cells toti potent cells now in the body of earthworm the toti potent cells can be compared to that of what type of cells the archaeocytes where archaeocytes are present in the phylum porifera in the phylum porifera archaeocytes are called formative cells or toti potent cells now we observe the options toti potent cells of earthworm large gland cells supporting cells receptor cells basal cells now here the answer is basal cells they produce all cells of epidermis hence they are called toti potent cells or formative cells they can be compared to that of what type of cells of porifera the archaeocytes now we move for the next question now what is the next question thinnest septum in ferritima now as we observe the body of ferritima 
This is the first segment, second segment, third segment, fourth segment, and fifth segment, ninth segment, and tenth segment. And this is the anal segment we know very well. Now, in the body of erythema, total number of segments minimum 100, maximum 120. Now, as we observe the last segment, this is called anal segment. After the anal segment, there is no septum. There is no septum. In the same way, between the first and the second segment, no septum. Between the second and the third segment, no septum. Between the third and the fourth segment, no septum. Between the ninth and the tenth segment, no septum. Now, in the body of erythema, total number of septa absent. One, two, three, four, and five. Total number of septa absent in the body of erythema, five are absent. Now, here what is the question? What is the thinnest septum in the body of erythema present between the segments? Fourth segment and fifth segment. In between, what is present? The first septum. The first septum is thinnest septum present between fourth and fifth segment. Now, options. First one, two by three. Second one, three by four. Third, four by five. And the fourth one is 5 by 6. Now, where the thinnest septum present between 4th and 5th? Now, the correct option is 3rd. Now, move for the next question. The coordinating structure to the muscles during the locomotion of earthworm. Now, as we observe the locomotion in the body of earthworm, on the dorsal side of pharynx, suprapharyngeal ganglia present. On the ventral side of pharynx, subpharyngeal ganglia present. They are connected by circumpharyngeal connectivities. Now, from the subpharyngeal ganglia, the double ventral solid nerve cord arises. Double ventral solid nerve cord arises. On the nerve cord, the ganglia are arranged segmentally. On the nerve cord, the ganglia are arranged segmentally. Now, as we observe the narrow cord, the narrow cord arises from the subpharyngeal ganglia. Now, here what is the question? The coordinating structure to the muscles during the locomotion of earthworm. What are the muscles play an important role? One is circular muscles, second longitudinal muscles, protractor and retractor muscles. At the time of locomotion, the coordination and control of muscles is under the control of the double ventral solid nerve cord. Now, observe the options. The nerve cord, the nerve ganglia, the receptors, the body wall. The correct answer is nerve cord because as we observe the nerve cord, on the nerve cord, how many joint axons are present? Four joint axons are present. What is the function of axons? They are responsible for the quick nerve impulse propagation. So, the axons present in the nerve cord. In the locomotion, for the quick processes of nerve impulse propagation, what are required the axons? The axons are present in the nerve cord. So, ultimately, during the locomotion, coordination is brought to by what type of structure? The double ventral solid nerve cord. Now, the answer is the nerve cord. Now, move for the next question. Now, the intestinal CK are extended from. Now, as we observe the digestive system, this is the first one we call it as mouth. The mouth opens into buccal cavity. Buccal cavity opens into pharynx. Pharynx opens into esophagus. Esophagus opens into gizzard. The gizzard opens into stomach. And the stomach opens into intestine. Now, as we observe, the intestine is going to start from 15 to 2, the last segment. Now, 
the intestine is classified into pre tiflo solar region tiflo solar region and post tiflo solar region now this is 26th segment now as we observe the elementary canal from the 26th segment the lateral outgrowths will arise they are called the intestinal ck segment in which intestinal ck are present 26 now the intestinal ck extending 26th segment 25th segment 24 23 the intestinal CK extending from 26th segment to either 24 or 23 segments. What is the function of intestinal CK? They secrete an enzyme called amylase. What is the function of amylase? That is responsible for the digestion of starch. What is meant by starch? It is an example of polysaccharide. Now we observe the question intestinal ck are extended from first option 23rd to 26 second option 27th to 30th third option 23rd to 20th fourth option 26th to 23rd now this is the 26th this is the 25th 24th and 23rd from 26th to either 24th R23, what are you extended? The intestinal CK. Now, what is the correct answer for this question? The fourth option. Now, move for the next question. Tiflosol hanging into the intestine. Now, the question is Tiflosol hanging into the intestine. Now, again, as we observe the elementary canal of peritima or earthworm. Now, this part we call it as mouth, this is buccal cavity, this is the pharynx, esophagus, gizzard, stomach. Now, the mouth is present in the first segment, buccal cavity present in the first segment, second and part of third. Pharynx present in part of third and fourth segment. What about the esophagus, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth segment? Now, the gizzard present in the 8th segment. What about the stomach present from 9th to 14th segment. Now from 15th to last segment what is present intestine. Now the intestine is classified into 3 regions based on presence or absence of tiflosol. Now from 15th to 26th segment what is absent the tiflosol absent. So, it is called pre tiflosolar region. Now, from 26th segment to 2, last 23 or 25. Total number of segments 120. Now, you remove last 23 or 25. 23 or 25. We are getting 95 or 97. Now, from 26th segment to 2, either 95 or 97 segments this part we call it as the tiflosolar region here the tiflosol is present now in the last 23 in the last l means last in the last 23 or 25 segments again tiflosol absent it is called post tiflosolar region what is the other name of post tiflosolar region? It is called the rectum. Now, in the intestine, what is the longest part? The tiflosolar region. Here, the absorption of digested food materials will be completed. Now, based on this information, we have to select the answer. Tiflosol hanging into the intestine in the lumen of 26th segment to 2 last 23 or 25 segments in front of anus. This is anus. The post tiflosolar region present in the last 23 or 25. Now, second option, lumen of 15th to 26. Third option, lumen of 15th to 35. Lumen of 15th to 29. 
now based on this hint what is the correct answer for this question that is the first option the lumen of 26th segment to 2 it is extending up to 95 or 97 excluding the last 23 or 25 segments now the correct answer is the first one now we go for the next question the structure which is helpful in the respiration of earthworm now the first option is body wall second option is dry body wall third option is moist body wall and the fourth one is chemically coated body wall now as we observe the body wall of earthworm now this is this part we call it as cuticle now this part we call it as epidermis this part is called dermis and this part is called muscles this is outer coelomic epithelium now this entire part we call it as body wall now as we observe the body wall the body wall is kept moist by one reason is moisture which is present in the burrows the second one we call it as coelomic fluid and the third one we call it as the mucus in the same way as we observe the body wall in the body wall what are present the blood capillaries are present now what type of body wall what type of body wall is responsible for the respiration what type of body wall that is vascularized what is meant by vascularized vascularized means blood capillaries are present now vascularized moist body wall again it is repeated what type of body wall responsible for the respiration vascularized moist body wall because as it is vascularized the exchange of gases is very very efficient because in the body wall as we observe these are the blood vessels in the blood vessels what is passing the blood plasma is passing now from the environment the oxygen enters into the blood from the blood the carbon dioxide comes out so that what type of body wall is responsible for the exchange of gases are responsible for the respiration vascularized moist body wall if such body wall is kept dry the earthworm dies due to suffocation or lack of respiration so what is the correct answer for this question the moist body wall now what is the answer the moist body wall such moist body wall having blood capillaries called vascularized moist body wall now we move for the next question typical septum starts from now what is meant by typical septum now the student get a doubt what is meant by typical septum typical septum means the septum having the septal pore now this one we call it as the septum se means septum now this we call it as the septal pore now the septal pore is guarded by the muscle sphincter the septal pore is guarded by muscle sphincter now as we observe the body of erythema in the body of erythema where the septal pore is going to start now this is 14th segment and this is 15th segment from 14 by 15 onwards what are present the septal pores are present now what is the first typical septum the typical septum means the septum having septal pore such typical septum first present between 14 and 15 from this onwards the septum having the septal pore now what is the answer for this question typical septum starts from first option 4 by 5 segment no septal pore second option 14 by 15 onwards each septum having the septal pore now that is the correct answer now what is the correct answer for this question second now 
move for the next question.